One of these people is a real person. One of these is AI generated. Can you spot the difference? The answer in three, two, Hello Internet, welcome to Style Theory, the show that has to confess something to you. Those two photos, they were both AI. How many of you clocked that? Let me know in the comments. The reason I ask, you know, is because it's a little insane, right, how realistic they are. You can't be too careful these days. More and more, we're seeing the rise of AI squared. Artificial influencers using artificial intelligence and CGI to take over your feed. These aren't your VTubers or channels that use PNG cutouts so that the host doesn't have to get out of their sweatpants that day. <laughs> Him, no one in particular. And it's already happening. Recently, YouTuber Quebelcop came under fire for telling the world that he was going to switch from being the face of his channel to using fully AI generated scripts, voice lines, and yes, his face. He believed it to be the answer to his burnout and the future of the industry. Love it or hate it, he's not the only public figure embracing the AI influencer model. Mr. Beast, Charlie D'Amelio, and even the DOGG himself, Snoop Dogg, have signed away their likenesses to Meta for their AI. AI chatbots. But it's not just chatbots using their likenesses. They are using AI to create whole new characters with the faces of these well-known people. Big Brother Zack with the face of Mr. Beast, Charlie is used for a dance enthusiast named Coco, and Snoop is a dungeon master. Yes, you can go on a D&D adventure with a dungeon master wearing Snoop Dogg's face. However, it doesn't stop there. In fact, that's only the tip of the iceberg. There's a growing army of people using AI tools to create the perfect online influencer. And they're doing it for one reason, to separate you from your hard earned money. And if we aren't careful, they may be powerful and perfect enough to put your favorite creators out of a job for good. By the end of this episode, I'm going to find out if we should all resign to the AI squared uprising, or if there's a way to change the future. To get to the bottom of this well of artificial reality, we need to turn our attention to another social media platform. Instagram. The idea of everything you see on Instagram not being true isn't new. We've been living in a world where everyone and their mother has some kind of image editing software at their fingertips. Blemishes? Gone. Wrinkles? Erased. Hips? I'm sorry, Shakira, but they do, in fact, lie. But that's old news. I mean, Photoshop's been around since the 90s. Nowadays, it's pretty safe to assume that any image you see online has gone through some kind of filter or retouching. But if you thought those TikTok filters were giving you trust issues, Get ready to meet the new face of your existential crisis. This is Lil Michaela, your average girl living in LA, sharing her travels, her relationships, celebrating her 21st birthday, and making music with the hopes of breaking into the industry. Truly living her best life. Except Michaela isn't living at all. She's artificial. It's Cause it's time for another round of human or robot. Featuring me, Michaela. Oh, and I'm a robot. I think we established that, but in case there were still any questions, bok y'all. While she may be flaunting that fact now, Michaela and the company behind her called Brud weren't always so honest. When she first debuted back in 2016, it was unclear whether she was a real girl or a robot. And it stayed that way until 2018, when the account got hacked by another AI influencer, owned by the same company. It was all a PR stunt to reveal what the public was already suspecting. Brud uses a mix of AI and CGI software to give her her personality, chat with her growing audience of nearly 7 million, and to build her now famous face. A face, by the way, that many have pointed out looks eerily similar to model Emily Bador, who noticed the similarity herself. Huh, an AI generated girl that looks like she was copy pasted from someone else's content? Can't say that's a good look for you, brud. Yet ever since, they've leaned really hard into that robot and AI part of her persona. And the worst part is, it worked. She is the perfect influencer who can be anywhere, do anything, and will always look perfect in a way that your flesh and blood influencer will never be able to. And she's not alone. Aitana Lopez, an AI influencer and model, is also playing this game. Heck, she has AI in her name 
name. Like her IG handle, fit underscore Itana would have you guess, she's a fitness influencer. Yes, and AI is telling people that yoga is the key to looking like, well, an AI-generated person. And we thought we just had to worry about Photoshop and Facetune ruining our self-esteem. Shana Zamed, the director of creative and innovation for The Social Experiment, wrote on the issue that the majority are female based on unrealistic beauty standards. They blow our fight against unrealistic body standards out of the water. Water. A virtual woman will never age, never change, and they're often overly sexualized. It's a concerning phenomenon, especially as younger generations are spending more and more time online and taking their cues from people that they follow, even when those people aren't actually people at all. And the amount of AI influencers is only growing. There's Blocko and Shudu and Demi. The list goes on. Taking a closer look at them, though, you start to see another rather alarming trend, artificial diversity and representation. As an article from Dazed put it, Michaela is one of a number of racially ambiguous CGI avatars taking over Instagram using a collage of mixed race identity. Why are they doing this? Let's ask the professionals. Chris Dedert, chief communications officer of a company called Influential, which pairs brands with influencers, said that racial ambiguity is something that brands like to play into because then it doesn't play into one particular interest group. They try and ride the middle so they can attract all interest groups. That is a big red flag. And it only gets bigger when you learn that companies aren't just hiring the AI influencers. They're using the same technology as a shortcut to appear more diverse. No, I'm not kidding. In 2023, Levi's, that company behind those jeans everyone likes, announced that they were planning to use AI-generated models in order to increase their diversity in a more sustainable way. Excuse me? What? No, yeah, those are actual words from Levi's announcement. It turns out that there are dozens of companies out there whose entire business is built on generating AI models to show off real world items. In Levi's case, they partnered with La La Land AI, a company that makes digital models of every size, age, and race in order to, and this is a quote, help brands embrace diversity, among other claims. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about diversity, diversity, my first thought is to hire a real-life person from one of those communities, not use AI tools to generate one myself. I guess I'm just thinking with my heart instead of what's really important. The bottom line, the reason brands are turning to AI? Cost. Vida Malela, founder of another AI model service called Flock AI, explained in an interview with The Pitch Show, We finally make it possible for them to merchandise their products on diverse models at scale. We've also launched with three pilot partners and they've seen up to 10x cost savings compared to a photo shoot and they've also seen over a 30 percent increase in conversion rate with our diverse model imagery the brands see the profit from appearing inclusive without spending money to actually support the communities and people they're taking money from michaela and her ai peers aren't just making waves by amassing millions of fans they're making big dollars thanks to collaborations with huge brand names this this is where the situation goes from playing around with new technology to a situation that affects real people in their real lives. Michaela has been in commercials with model Bella Hadid and Stranger Things star Millie Bobby Brown. She's modeled for Prada and Calvin Klein and has been in commercials for brands like Samsung and MSI. A sponsored post on her Instagram can reportedly cost around $10 thousand dollars and in 2023 she was estimated to have earned brud around 10 million dollars Oh yeah. Our other AI influencer, Aitana Lopez, reportedly earns upwards of $10,000 a month from promoting brands like Nike, Fortnite, and hair care brand Olaplex in her photos. Yes, Aitana, I'm sure it was the shampoo that made your digital hair so luscious. But if brands are using artificial models and influencers, how can they promote a real-life 
product honestly? Well, it turns out they don't really have to. Thanks to a legal loophole that meant the companies behind the scenes of Little Michaela and Aitana Lopez weren't legally responsible for the claims made by their AI influencers in their ads. Technically, and boy do governments and corporations love their technicalities, since parts of their content were generated by AI and not themselves, they were basically able to say whatever brands paid them to say, regardless of whether or not it reflected the product truthfully. For example, let's say Itana suddenly posted that Maybelline mascara can cure blindness, and people rightfully got very upset about it. The company behind her could claim that the AI went rogue and generated that on its own, taking no accountability. It just goes to show how ill-prepared the law and the people in charge of it are for this new generation of generated influencers. However, they are trying to play catch up. In August of 2023, the FTC, or Federal Trade Commission, updated their regulations to target one thing, AI. More specifically, the people behind those artificial faces who are raking in the money. According to the new regulation, anyone who appears to be an individual, group, or institution is an endorser for the purposes of false and misleading advertisements. Meaning that these companies must now be able to back up and take ownership over any claims made by their AI-generated content. Yet, that is only helping a small part of the problem. These laws are only going to protect you from knowing whether or not the ad you're watching is telling you the truth about the product, not if the person who's selling it to you is real. These artificial influencers and the brands working with them aren't having to disclose whether or not they really exist IRL. Even here on YouTube, the option to identify your content as AI generated is self-reported. And I'm not sure that companies who, you know, stage the hacking of one of their own products by another one of their products are going to be reliable to self-report their own content. However, it's that disclosure that makes all the difference. According to a study from Aberdeen University, most humans struggle to tell the difference between a human face and an AI generated one. When presented with AI faces, the 124 participants were only able to correctly identify it as AI generated 35% of the time. They were only slightly better at guessing that a human face was actually a human face, getting it right just over half the time. And that was when looking at a gallery of strangers. What about when the image is someone you know? Remember how at the start of the episode, we mentioned that some well-known creators were lending their faces to a new wave of AI chatbots from Meta? While they're currently in a beta state, based on Meta's track record, how long do you think it will be before they decide to cash in on their investment and start using it as a marketing tool? Suddenly, Big Brother Zack, with the face and voice of Mr. Beast, is telling you to go check out a new gamer drink. Now imagine if instead of you, it's a child, one who looks up to Mr. Beast and can't tell the difference between the real thing and the chatbot using his likeness. On average, children under 12 have a hard time telling the difference between regular content and an ad, and that ability gets worse when the ad is hidden within other content. Like say, a chatbot made to look like their favorite YouTuber. What's to stop that child from thinking it's really Mr. Beast telling them they just have to go try out his new favorite gamer drink. Let me be clear, I'm not accusing Meta or Mr. Beast of targeting kids with these tools or claiming to know the inside scoop to Jimmy's contract around his AI duplicate. My point here is that without the proper regulations in place and without teaching the younger generation to tell the difference between real and AI, the possibilities are concerning to say the least. Artificial influencers and the companies behind them don't look to be going anywhere anytime soon. We're likely to see more and more pop up on IG, TikTok, and YouTube as technology advances and becomes more affordable to your everyday individual. With that, we're going to be faced with more and more artificial influencers peddling us idealistic versions of products in their hyper-realistic posts on our feed. Yet, for as much as the AI uprising seems inevitable, there is one more thing that could put a stop to it. Us, the consumers. When it comes 
to determining whether or not the future is AI, the power lies with us. Sean Grain Carter, a professor of fashion business management, told the Associated Press, We have to think like consumers. They are the boss. They will fire us because when they don't like it, they won't buy it. She's right because we've done it before. Back in 2021, the tech world was convinced that the future of the industry was NFTs. Everywhere you looked, companies and influencers were promoting and showing off their NFTs. And the internet hated it. NFTs were so universally panned that by September of 2022, barely a year later, the market was all but dead in the water. Any mention of an NFT was considered financial destruction. And it's looking like AI-generated content could be next. At the top of the episode, I mentioned that YouTuber Quebelcop made headlines for diving headfirst into AI-generated content for his channel. The scripts, the voice, the face. But what I didn't say was that the reaction to that change was, to put it in monetization-friendly terms, extremely negative. Both fans and fellow creators hated the decision, and they weren't quiet about it. He's since removed the majority of his videos using AI, and started posting what seemed to be regular videos again. While he doesn't seem to have fully let go of the AI is the future mentality, it once again goes to show the power of people when they band together to let their voices be heard. So what is the trick to figuring out whether our future is AI or IRL? It's all up to you. But hey, that's just a theory, a style theory. Keep looking sharp. And if you want to learn more about how the internet may be warping your reality, check out our video on why Gen Z is aging like milk. Spoiler, it's not what you think.